Hi, I'm Brian Henderson with Liberty Laundry. This is part two of a series of videos showing how I used SketchUp, a 3D modeling program, to design our most recent laundromat. So this is just a quick picture of uh, the store, the interior of it, and this is how it looks in the model that I created before we ever went to a builder to um, make our store. He was able to take screenshots and measurements from our 3D model and create a floor plan and make a building that is just the way I drew it. And you can, I mean, you can see for yourself, it is just absolutely identical uh, down to the fractions of an inch. So how did I do that? How did I create this uh, models of the equipment we're going to be using? Well, we had a bit of an advantage because this was our third laundromat. We knew what equipment we wanted. And so I was able to go to the manufacturer's website, in this case, we used the Speed Queen Quantum Gold equipment. So I went to Speed Queen's website and found the dimensions of the equipment as well as pictures of the equipment that I was able to uh, just simply crop and scale to the right size. And in SketchUp, you can just create a simple geometric shape and then apply a picture as a surface or a texture to um, your model. So let me show you how I did that. starts you off the little guy here I guess that's for scale but we're going to select him and delete <laughs> one thing you use a lot in SketchUp is going to be the rectangle tool I, uh, I love it you just select right here or you press R to access it and what you can do is simply click once don't hold down the mouse button but just click it once and lift up your finger and then you can move and you can see in the bottom right corner where it's showing the dimensions of what I'm drawing Additionally, another technique would be typing in what size you want. So say if I wanted to draw something that was 20 foot by 30 foot, I could type in 20 foot comma 30 foot. You see there in the bottom right corner uh, using apostrophes for the feet indicator and then press enter and it draws it exactly to, to that size. Okay, very good. So this equipment that we went with had a six inch steel base and uh, the uh, six inches high. Uh, the um, base was 26 and one half inches by 22 inches wide. So did you see how I did that? I Down here in the bottom right corner, I clicked once and lifted up my finger and then I typed in those dimensions, 26 space one half inches comma by 22 inches enter and that draws it exactly to that size all right now the next thing we're going to need is the push pull tool which is found right here or you can press p on your keyboard to jump straight to that you can then move your mouse over whichever section you want to lift or lower and click once lift up your finger and then just lift right up. Pretty neat, huh? So I want it exactly six inches high, so I'm going to type in six inches, enter, and now that is six inches high. Go into my select tool over here, or pressing the space bar to get to it, allows me to select an item. If I click and drag, that allows me to highlight this whole item. I'm going to right click this with my mouse and choose make group. So now this is one unit. If I hit M or choose the Move tool, I can move this on around. Or since it is a group, these little tools pop up that allow you to click and then rotate. Pretty handy. All right, next I'm going to be drawing my washer on top of this. But first, let's give this a different color than the ground I've got drawn below. So let's use the Bucket tool. It's right up here, or you can hit B. And then you can choose different colors, different textures. In this case, I'm just going to choose a dark gray. Just like that, give it a color. Back to our rectangle tool right here, or press R. I can just click one corner, lift up my finger, drag to the other corner, which you see how it snaps, and then click again. I'm now going to use my push-pull tool to lift this up <laughs> majestically into the sky uh, to a total height of 27 inches high. All right, so this is the exact dimensions of a 60-pound washer, a Speed Queen Quantum Gold washer. 
Now, it's not much use to us without a face to it, but it is dimensionally accurate. I'm going to go to File, Import, and I already have these images prepared. Again, I just, uh, I literally stole an image from Speed Queen's website. Sorry if there's copyright infringement, <laughs> but, and, uh, and then chopped it up in, in a photo editing program, of which there are plenty of free ones online. Uh, let's choose 60 pound surface. And you have three options here. Use as image, use as texture, or use as new match photo. We're going to use this as an image. Additionally, if it's not showing up the way you think it should be, look at files of type. Notice I have JPEG selected. Um, if you're seeing SKP, SketchUp, or anything else, then you've got a problem. If you choose JPEG, then it'll bring up these JPEG images. Okay, choose that. And it's going to want me to click on a corner to begin with. I'm going to click there, and then I'm going to drag it on up and apply it. And that is not the right size at all. What did I do? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to start all over again. I was looking at the wrong dimensions. Boy, that's real, real smart of me. Okay, let's start this over again. Hey guys, that was just a practice run, right? <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, so rectangle tool. It is actually, oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. 34 and 1 16th inches. Boy, that makes a lot more sense. By 44 and 11 16th inches. Okay, that's much more of the shape there. I'm going to push this up to six inches by using that push pull tool. All right, and then spacebar to get my select tool back, click and drag, and then I'm going to make this into a group. I'm going to use my bucket tool, color a dark gray. I'm now going to press R, and now I'm going to draw another rectangle across the top. Press P, lift this on up to a height of 49 and seven eighths inches. See, very important to double check your dimensions when doing this. It doesn't help if it's drawn to scale if you're looking at the wrong dimensions. Okay. <laughs> so, um, all right, file, import, 60 pound surface, use as image. Okay. I'm going to click here and drag it on up. Boop. There we go. And let's give the rest of this nice look to it. Bucket tool, where are you? Let's um, make it a lighter gray. Very good. Now, it's also usually very handy to um, put uh, uh, some, uh, some title on the top when you're moving a bunch of different sizes of equipment around to know what you're looking at. So I can go to Tools, 3D Text. Let's call this 60 pound washer. Well, how about just 60 pound? And then you can just place it on the top of the thing. And to make it a little bit easier to read, again, we could use our bucket tool and uh, just color that black. Now, one last step, very important, is to use your select tool, highlight the whole thing, right click it, and make it into a component. And what this allows you to do is to pull this into any other future model. Say you're making a completely different design. You could in, use that import function, which I'll show you in a moment, and pull these models on in. That's handy for your own use. It's also very handy if you want to import any 3D models other people have made into your model. So we're going to hit Create, and now that just saved that component. And if I want to bring in some other component, I can simply choose Import, and SketchUp files SKP, and let me get to my folder with my, all my components. And these are all different components I've put together for my own use for designing laundromats. So say I want to pull on my 20 pound washer. I can just simply do that. And there's my 20 pound washer. Using my move tool, I can simply click here and then rotate it, just like that. All right. That's the end of this short video. Be sure to stay tuned for my other videos in this series of how to design a launch mat using SketchUp. Thanks for watching. Bye.